Hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on this classic wooden motor cruiser here in Victoria, British Columbia, along with the loving memory of my pup, Jordy. All the while fixing it up for some pretty major cruising someday, so if that is the sort of thing that you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. I'd love to have you. So, what are we up to this week? A lot of little getting things done. Getting the finish on the stair um, assembly that we've been working on the last little while, as well as a whole bunch of stuff under the sole hell. You'll see. Just, you'll see. Well, good morning. I didn't get to wrap up with you guys last night. And uh, after thinking about this for a little while and practically sitting here and playing, driving, the boat thing. I'm actually very happy with the arrangement. I, it may sound like a rationalization, but I mean it. The fact that the throttle starts uh, way at the back and the idle is here. My sense of symmetry was getting the better of me and I kind of thought that's how they should look because, well, I guess that's how they look in the ads. But I think in reality, having idle at the back, full throttle all the way forward, I, it's just perfect and you know the action is just so nice it moves easy I put enough friction there's a friction adjustment on this although it's a bit crude enough friction on this that it doesn't actually rattle up here and it seems quite nice I'm super happy with it there's a fairly strong return spring on the injection pump on the engine which I may look at um, softening a little bit but on the whole this is a project that went really really well okay what do we have to well I've got three coats of uh, varathane now on the outside of the step box so it'll get flipped over and I'll start coating the uh, inside the steps etc of course I can do only maybe one or two coats a day of those so it takes a little bit of time don't want to make too much of a mess plus I have an experiment can you see where I'm going with this okay so the idea instead of getting all smart with calculations and jigs and figuring out ways to make these plastic frame extension PC thingies, I'm going to fall back on good old templates. Yes, indeed. Well, if I can cut and bend um, to a certain degree uh, strips of this EPS foam, uh, I can therefore make templates of every single one of them and uh, then just use them to cut them out on the bandsaw. That's the plan. Anyway. Okay, so in principle this looked like it worked, but it didn't really, because what I really need is a piece of foam, a template, that represents the high density molecular weight that I'm going to put in between the frames, and then set in another piece of foam that will be the actual new curved frame, and decide how I'm going to carve this to fit. You've seen me figure this out assorted ways already. So making this bent allows me to tuck it in behind the stringer, um, but in many ways it's more fragile than it was before because by the time you heat it, it deforms a bit and it's actually more vulnerable than it was before. Actually, that didn't seem so bad, but it seems very brittle. Anyway, I'm not sure this was going to work. Really, I should be using a different kind of foam, something like, you know, like pool noodle foam. Can you get that in sheet? Anyway, I'm going to play with what I got and there we go. The other reason I didn't mind buying a sheet of um, styrofoam is that I'm going to use the remainder of it to make a steam box to steam the frames at Hollow. <laughs> Back out you go. Ooh, it's heavy. Yes, I am about to make an epic mess. However, I'm hoping that the vacuum will deal with the bulk of it. Okay, here we go. My first plastic frame. Oddly enough, this piece of Styrofoam SM Polystyrene is more flexible I haven't heard many of those lately. Um, then the sample piece I had lying around. So at least for the frame template, uh, this is going to be just perfect for the, in other words, the oak frame template. For the plastic frame template, oh jeez, I don't know. 
It would be much better if I didn't have to heat treat it to bend it because of course it's got to come straight again to use as a template. Too much information? Haha! <laughs> Let me count another one. Okay, I'm going to say three pieces of sample material is going to be adequate for this project. Now, while I'm doing this messy work, I'm going to cut this up into four equal size strips, which will be assembled together into my new steam box. a bead of blue in the sea. Good. Now it would have been fun to set up a hot wire to cut this, which I've done in the past. Uh, certainly there would be no dust at all, but actually that worked out remarkably well. Um, I'm actually really excited about this. This is definitely going to bend easily in excess of what I need for the oak frames. And if I can get, honestly, anyway, we'll get into it when I get down. Let's, uh, let's open the sole and uh, yeah I, I don't know why I'm stalling it's just gotta be done just put you over here oh it sure is convenient that this is nice small panels now okie dokie 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 hello bilge as this is the first bay I want to experiment with, I'm awfully glad this piece of blocking back here wasn't affixed. There we go. Actually, I should have been more observant. This bay is a problem in general. I got that block out, but there's a butt block there, or there's one of these non-butt block blocks. I'm not going to remove it while I'm afloat. And there is a butt block up here. Now, I'm only expecting to put the new sister frames in to behind this stringer, which isn't really a stringer, it's the ledge for the sole, but it's a structural point. I don't think I'm going to come all the way up to this stringer because I'm already a foot above the waterline here. Uh, so I'm going to jump all the way to this bay. This bay has the complication that it has an old depth sounder um, sensor in the bottom of it, but if I don't do one relatively close to the front of the boat, I won't be, or to the front of this section, I won't be able to get a good idea about how long um, a piece I need of the uh, high density molecular weight because I've changed the design and although I'll be able to use all those two foot sections, I now need longer sections for at least half of this part of the boat. So this is how I find out how long. So here goes my first sister, <laughs> so to speak, under the engine bed. So that is easily going to take this bend. Easy, 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 easy. And back up underneath. Now, this is a sharp bend here. For, to sit on top of here and then go under there, this needs a trim, which I'm going to do. It's one of the reasons I bought that mini recip because I'm going to take little notches out of the bottom edge here for this to go up into there. But I'm going to just force it for now because I think it will. There we go, roughly. The neat thing about this is that it gives me an idea, which is why I'm changing the design. Let me put you down here, you'll have a better idea of what's going on. There we go. Okay, so this is a good example of why I wanted to change my whole concept here. Because the various curves aren't one uniform curve. For starters, the frame is not gonna sit flat against the flat of this stringer. You can see I have a wedge in here. Secondly, if I want to make a single radius, it's impossible really because the curve of the bottom of the boat and the curve of the side of the boat aren't the same and they don't meet uh, in such a way that it's really easy to do a continuous radius. So I think I'm going to have to just compromise and put in a radius different at the bottom than at, uh, well, in other words, a different radius below the stringer than above. And this is what all this foam is to help me do. <laughs> okay, it's been forever since I've talked to you. I've been doing a lot of thinking. I've been up and down through all the frame bays playing with this piece of foam. It's amazing how valuable this piece of foam has been in understanding what it is I'm trying to do here. I think I started off saying that 
the frames were not going to sit square against here, but I, I'd actually forgotten what I had in mind. Um, I do intend to make every frame sit square against this stringer. And if I put my foot down here, let me see if you can see everything I'm talking about here. Okay, that will give me an idea where the frame will then land against the planking. And by this point, I don't need the filler piece, which is in there. So the filler piece will go from that joint right there to wherever up inside this uh, clamp that um, the piece is perpendicular or or in line with the face of the stringer here that lands up in there. And I can't determine that yet without cutting out this notch, which I fully intend to do. So I'm actually feeling pretty good because what I'm going to do, I'm just going to choose a radius that I know that the oak can easily take, which is, I mean, this is nothing. I don't know what this radius is, like six feet or something like that. So I'm going to basically have the oak straight across this section here um, in line with the face of the stringer. Uh, it's going to be clamped onto here. I don't think I'm through bolting. I think I'm going to put like a plate and two bolts. And then the curve is just where that straight line then meets the uh, planking here. Now, I know it's not straight right now, but it, it can be. And so I just have to calculate the length I need basically from this joint to the top of the clamp here for the new plastic, which is about 33 inches. Even though I haven't really achieved anything, I've learned something, which is an achievement. Yeah, yeah, and I see it clearer, much clearer, uh, being able to actually hold a piece in here that, uh, that lets me know exactly how everything's gonna sit. The other thing that I determined, which I'm very happy about, is that I only need a five foot frame up here, uh, which is great because the oak comes in lengths of 12 feet, uh, so I can easily get two frames out of each piece. This is going really well, considering it's not going very well. I've got this open, it's a good time to finish up this structure. Beauty. Okay, and the last thing I really wanted to do today while I had the sole open and my mock-up frames in place was to finally, 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 finally confirm for the fuel tank because I need to order it if I want it to be made in time. So, and it fits. And at the aft end, we have plenty, plenty, plenty of room. Down here would be the concern, but it's fine. Okay, fantastic. I'm gonna get these fuel tanks, these fuel tanks, ordered. Well, there's three coats inside and out. I'm going to call that enough because it's time to put this thing into service. Now, I don't often do unboxing, but this one promises to be so awesome I can't resist. If this is what I think it is, this is going to be pretty cool. Some of you, I'm sure, watch um, Sail Life with Mads. And some of you may have seen him recently install a camera at the top of his masthead. I believe it was a Garmin. I watched the episode and I thought, that's a pretty neat thing. I wouldn't mind a camera so I could check up on stuff. Well, I did a little, re little research and I didn't end up with a Garmin. I ended up with a real link, I think it's pronounced. Um, I did a little research and it seemed to be just the ticket. It has another neat feature over the one that Mads got in that it is a power tilt pan zoom. And uh, that should be pretty cool. So the reason I like the idea of it, gosh, that reminds me of the old days when you used to get a floppy disk with stuff like this. I doubt that's what that is. Um, some of you will remember, anticipation, eh? Um, over the last Christmas holidays, I had to leave MV Geordie while I stayed aboard MV Zephyrus downtown at uh, the Empress over the Christmas holidays. And of course, I was a little bit anxious woo, uh, during that period that the build pump would stay operating. So I uh, downloaded a little, a little app to a spare phone and set the phone up. And uh, every time there was motion in the bilge, in other words, the bilge pump ran, it um, sent me an email with the video in it. Well, that got me thinking about the kind of things you could do like that. Oh, come on! <laughs> um, this looks really cool. Let's take out all the toys, uh, clear away the box. Um, this is not plastic, 
Uh, again, I sound like I'm quoting Mads. This is aluminum. Um, this is really neat. So basically what this is, uh, it sits this way and you mount it on a surface. Don't know what that's going to be yet. I don't know if the top mount is removable so that I can just directly mount it to the underside of the surface. So what it has is a motorized pan and tilt, I don't think I should force it, well I won't, um, video camera with a schwack of uh, um, infrared LEDs so that you can see with night vision, a microphone, a camera, and it's um, uses power over Ethernet, which is a technology where you can use a single cable, although now that I see this cable, it doesn't seem like that. It seems like there's a schwack of cables, but anyway, it connects up as an IP camera, so it's part of your network, and uh, so once it's on the network, it uploads video to the web. I imagine on a space on the website, the cloud of the company, and uh, you can download that as you need to see it. Anyway, I honestly, I didn't spend that much time figuring out what it was. This was not very expensive. Um, I'll put a link down below. And uh, I figured it's the kind of thing, if it's cool, let me just get it and start to play with it. Neat. And the point is, I can look at the boat, if I put it in the right spot, basically on the mast, the little mast, I can check up on the boat, both for security, but also for just wind and waves and time. Anytime I'm away from the boat, anywhere in the world, on my phone. Cool? All right, so I spent a few minutes playing with it, and you can see I set up a little mount uh, to test it. And I don't want to sound like too much of a IP cam fanboy, which apparently I may be, because this thing is so cool. I know I'm a decade behind on stuff like this, and I've never had anything like this, and I don't know anything about this technology, really. But it just does exactly what it, would said, what it says it would do. It just, it just works, and it's pretty cool. I basically plugged it in, opened the app, and in two seconds, it was working. Uh, I don't know if what you're seeing, because the camera is now in the field of view. Anyway, let, let me give you a bit of a tour. <laughs> You'll have to forgive the sketchiness of this little arrangement, but this is a little uh, Wi-Fi amplifier that is picking up the signal from MV Zephyrus, which is how I get internet on the boat. And normally it's in, anyway, I just had to hang it here for a second. Okay, so the camera itself terminates with this cable with a bunch of connectors, um, one of which is ethernet, one of which is power, which is 12 volts, one of which is audio, and one is actually a push button. I'm not gonna push it right now because it's some sort of configuration thing, and I haven't found any reference to it in the instructions yet. Now, the only thing that I have any disappointment about this thing, at first glance anyway, is this cable. If this is supposed to be an outside device, you'd think this section of the wire might be a little longer to get you inside. As a result, all these connectors are only two feet from the camera itself, so even though they give you a little weatherproof gland for the um, ethernet, I, that, I'll find a solution. Anyway, so I plug the ethernet into the amplifier, I plug the power dongle into power, and I fired up the app on the uh, iPad here, and it instantly worked. And this is a motorized camera after all, right? So I can basically drive it around the room and look anything I want, both panning and zooming. It also has a bunch of presets here. I can basically just jump to one of the presets I've already put in, in this case the dual press. Now you'll see it does the pan and zoom first and then does the focus. Okay, um, I won't keep pushing buttons and making this thing jump around, but it is really cool. Let me get it installed outside and work on some of the other neat features it does. The alerts, the motion sensing, it can send you an email with the last few minutes of video. It can do, anyway, it's pretty cool. Okay, so here I have the camera installed outside on the canopy frame, and I'm really impressed with this thing. Of course, it has the pan and tilt, so I can pan around and look across the harbor or whatever I want to see. As well, as I mentioned, it'd be really neat when I'm away from the boat to be able to check on the uh, mooring lines or possibly the fenders or any other stuff that is the interface with the dock. Really, really neat. Love it. You can set pre-named, uh, predefined views, which is really handy for the various things you may want to look at. And this points out uh, one of the things about it is that it does the zoom and then the focus, which is a little unusual, but it, you know, all things being equal, it's just fine. 
and night vision. This is with the built-in uh, infrared lighting. Uh, this is pitch dark, so all of this is done with the infrared lighting. Pretty neat. <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it! Well, hello and welcome to the Travels with Jordy Scotch Whiskey of the Week. And you might notice uh, the image on the screen in front of you, um, and many of you have probably already seen this last Thursday. So the reason, as you can probably guess by now, that this is going to be a Scotch Whiskey of the Week is because I'm about to join in on uh, Leo's live stream of putting the whiskey plank, in other words, the very last plank, in Tally Ho, uh, just across the water from me. In fact, literally, I can almost see him. Anyway, I thought it'd be a fun way to do the beer of the week as a toast uh, to Leo and his crew during this momentous occasion for him. So we're going to be drinking uh, McCullen's uh, uh, single malt Scotch whiskey from Isla, and I'm not going to have a sip just yet because, after all, this is all about Leo and his crew, and. Um, We'll look forward to that in a few minutes. This live stream is going to go live in a minute or so. There's over 5,000 people in the waiting room already. Uh, if you're not familiar with Leo Sampson and his restoration of um, the Bristol Channel Cutter Tally Ho, you must be living under a rock. This is the most significant wooden boat a YouTube channel out there, and Leo and his people have just made such an amazing job of it. But not only that, the project just elicits such interest and evokes such involvement. The community is fantastic around him. I've had the pleasure of chatting with him a few times and uh, he's a top-notch guy, as you all know. Okay, so we're gonna sit tight and do uh, some of our administrative work while we get ready for the live stream. Okay, so uh, last week's t-shirt winner was Tim and Pat Stevenson. Um, so Tim and Pat get a hold of me and um, uh, we'll make sure you get your t-shirt. Uh, last week, two new patrons came on. Uh, thank you ever so much. Uh, one is simply Jay. Thank you, Jay. And the other is, I hope I pronounced this correctly, Zapinatas Andreas. And I'm sure I made a mess of that. that um, and so please take my apologies. And uh, cheers to you both, but we'll wait a minute to do the actual cheers. And just an update on the Amazon uh, wish list. The circuit breaker that came in last week without uh, a name actually came from Baylor Fuchs. Thanks so much, Baylor. Okay, so we're going to uh, now just wait patiently the last um, few seconds uh, for the uh, Whiskey Pank Plank live stream from Leo and um, the Tally Ho. And folks, we've just gone live. Leo is uh, explaining the process of today. Uh, he doesn't do many live streams. In fact, this may actually be his first. Uh, so he's just talking about how um, he's going to put this last plank in place. Unfortunately, the video is coming in sideways, but that's a little concern. All right, Pete is pounding the leading edge of the last whiskey plank in place. Uh, Leo has reminded him twice now to watch his language. <laughs> Perfect. And here we go with the final tapping home of the whiskey plank of Tallyho. Well, the plank is officially installed and they're heading off uh, to drink whiskey, which I will join in. And perhaps some of you have already, and if you haven't, join in yet again. Well, here we are. They're set up uh, to pour on the uh, ship saw. And uh, we're just a moment or two away. Here's Leo. And we'll cheers to you all. Congratulations. Job well done and well underway. I'll just send along a pre-type congratulations comment. Well, all you need is a word of the week now, and I think it will have to be plank. So uh, let plank be the word of the week. You know what to do it. This was fun for me. I hope it was fun to you. 